previously on JR's Corner. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to JR's Corner. Uh, I am JR. Uh, got a part two of my video for you. Um, kind of going over the most recent stuff I did to her. Um, a lot of time lapse on it. So, you know, just enjoy it. Sit back, whatever. Grab your popcorn. Try to be a little educational as well. So, good little mix. Um... But here's the rest of the story of my last video. Um, if you like it, give me a thumbs up and a subscribe and all that cool stuff. I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, just enjoy. Thanks. What's going on, everybody? So now that you've got the background to everything, here she is. She's been sitting for about a month and needs new brakes. So we went ahead and we are, um, we got the brakes ordered. Uh, we're going to do an oil change on her. She's been sitting, she's dirty, she's gross. So we're going to see if we can give her some love and get her back on the road. Let's do it. <laughs> Very brutal feeling. Very brutal feeling. This one, as I you probably saw, it split where it's not supposed to split, and then it's just tearing away at it. Very hard and brutal feeling. Old guy walking down the street. Here is what the new stuff looks like. This definitely feels a lot more pliable as far as stuff goes, and it doesn't have a big old tear in it, so we'll, we'll stuff these in. I mean, these are one of the quickest things you can swap out really because it takes all of five minutes to unbolt it and bolt it back in with the new one. And it has a slit in there so you can have them around your shade bar. Alright, back to the grind. <laughs>
just like that. Rotors, calipers, pads, done. All right, so that was really fast. So how about we slow it down a little bit and I show you exactly what I just did. All right, so this red piece right here, that's the caliper. This piece right here is your brake rotor. And inside this little hole right there, you have brake pads. I'll try not to get the shadow in there, but brake pads. Um, here's the new ones. Comes wrapped in plastic. It's usually got a little bit of oil on there too, just to help keep it from rusting while it's stored. Here's a new brake pad. That's what stops your car. And then a brand new caliper. Now, you might ask, okay, well, why are you replacing all of it? Well, you know, I, I just did brakes on this car about a year ago, right before SEMA last year in October. Um, and the brakes are still pretty good. It, the car's been sitting, obviously. But what happened was I replaced the front calipers and rear calipers as well. I did a uh, conversion on this car and my neighbor's doing work too. I probably can hear him. Anyways, so I did a conversion on this car and the calipers right here where the uh, brake line comes in actually started leaking on a couple of them. And rather than just fix a couple of things i figured i'm you know i'm just gonna go ham and replace all my calipers just do it all good do it right that way i'm not having to worry about it later on especially with my kids driving it so let's get to it i'm going to show you how to do it a little bit by a, at a time all right so the first thing we're going to do i'm going to stuff a screwdriver in here just to kind of get the caliper a little on the looser side give us a, some room to work I'm going to take my 17 millimeter wrench on, on Hondas, it's going to be a 17. Other cars, they vary in size, but we're going to bust these bolts loose. The reason I'm not using the other side of my wrench is because it's a ratcheting wrench. I don't want to break it with a lot of tension. So we just bust them loose quick. We'll take these guys off. grease on these are still like brand new maybe got 5,000 miles on this car since the last time I did it that out of the way just push that to the side and then we've got these other bolts back here same thing 17 mil on the uh, Hondas if you're working on something else it's gonna vary depending on what you're working on just to find what, what, what's supposed to be there bracket bolts on the new calipers so we gotta make sure we put those in a spot where I'm not gonna lose them everything else on the caliper you're done with so just to show you there's still quite a bit of pad left that line in the middle that's your essentially your wear this is your I call it your squealer so when your brakes get low and this starts touching the rotor It'll squawk at you, squeal at you, and that's how you know when it's time to do your brakes again. All right, now if anybody that lives north of, say, Flagstaff, Arizona, anywhere where you get snow, you probably hate me for leaving these on. But I find them rather convenient. Most of the time. These little screws Honda uses on their rotors 
really serve no other purposes other than just to be a convenience to help hold the rotor on when you're servicing the brakes, which I find it nice, but if you live anywhere where there's lots of rust, they are a pain in the butt to get off. I have drilled or whatever, torched, all kinds of different things. My fair share of these little screws to get them to break loose. But down here in Arizona, they seem to do okay. They're working like they're supposed to. There we go, down to nothing. All right, so now just to reverse the process to go back together. I don't know if you caught it on my other, on when I was doing the other side, but when it comes to the, uh, can you go grab me a thing of brake clean? When it comes to the um, rotors, you want to just make sure you're hitting them quick with some brake clean, because they usually do have a layer of film, oil, or something on them just to keep them from rusting. And we want to make sure we get that off so we don't have any issues with gunking up our pads and um, whatnot. So let me just hit these quick. And just like that, new rotors are on, not going to go anywhere. Alright, so now we've got the brand new caliper. They don't always come painted. So, my kit that I ordered was from Auto Anything. They actually have a kit for all four wheels, painted calipers, cross-drilled slotted rotors, and decent uh, brake pads for a good price. So I jumped on that. Um, usually I just go with their pads and rotors kit. I don't usually replace calipers. But... Neighbors being loud. All right. So this is where you're gonna, this is where you're gonna reuse your old bolts. Go back up with it. bolted up the caliper bracket tightened I took the caliper itself off you just throw these little shins in here this will help keep things from squeaking and squawking and making noise and throw these on here real fast just like that and then your pads. Now I always like to do the pad with the wear indicator on the inside and the reason being is the inside pad generally speaking wears out faster and that way you catch it once when it wears out as opposed to maybe later. Come on. Together good and it, uh, you want to make sure your bolts 
for the slide pins have plenty of lube on them these one actually because they are brand new calipers have it on there already so we just gotta slide on the caliper just a little bit here get this other one on Gotta pinch the boot down a little bit, and you should be able to get your slide pin in. And then you tighten it back up. All right, so everything's tight. Uh, if you're replacing the caliper, you do want to make sure that you're using the right caliper on the right side, and it should always be the caliper that has the bleed screw on the up. If we were to put this accidentally on the other side, that would be facing down towards the bottom of the caliper. You're not gonna bleed anything with it like that. So um, we've got the bleed screw ready to go. Now all we've got to do is switch the line over which if you're just doing brakes and, and pads and rotors, you don't have to worry about. But um, for our sake, we are going to switch this rotor quick and then we'll be done with this side. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is you wanna get your uh, pliers. You can use pinch pliers like these or vice grips. Um, you just wanna pinch the line here real fast. This will help kinda help control the brake fluid that's coming out so that you can do this without making too big of a mess. All right, so this bolt that is uh, holding the brake line onto the caliper is actually a, an 11 millimeter. It's the first time I've worked on a Honda and not had to go finding find my missing 10 millimeter, which if you don't have a missing 10 millimeter, you don't work on cars enough. Since this is off the uh, off the car, I'm going to use a screwdriver to help me leverage it because it should be fairly tight. All right, and then with a new caliper, it should always come with, or you should always replace these copper crush washers, and because that's how it seals the line so you don't get uh, brake fluid everywhere. off quick. Now if you notice, it's not even really leaking, and a lot of that's just because I got the, the piece on there. Take this off, let's put it on your old caliper. I just make sure my threads are good quick. Yep. Not sure if they painted this over them or anything like that. It should be good. 
crush washer. You do want to be careful with the brake fluid that leaks because it will eat paint. So you want to make sure you get it cleaned up as quick as you can. Alright, we're good and tight. Take that off. You can take this guy off. Come on. Let it bleed just a little bit. Just to try to get some of the air out. And then we'll go around and get everything buttoned up later. Alright, so we're all good to go. Now we just got to uh, rinse and repeat. I'm going to do the back ones quick and then and then we can bleed it. Be done. So guess we better get to work. <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm sitting here bleeding brakes, right? And I kept on hearing this weird honking noise. I figured out what it is. Listen. Pump it! Pump it! filter honking when I bleed brakes. Interesting.
YouTube family. So, working on my car, I ran to the parts store to get me a PCV valve for my valve cover. So I can get it all finished up, buttoned up, and uh, chilling in my Acura, right? Driving along, and as I'm driving along, I hear a weird pop noise, and the car won't go anymore. I thought I broke the transmission or something. Let me show you what I actually did. So what actually happened is, I don't know if you can see that. My axle broke into two pieces. Good times. I guess it's something else to fix. Let's do it. So here it is, the finished product. Got the brakes done, got everything bled, got everything good with the brakes. Um, did some work on the uh, the engine as well. Got the valve cover resealed, it was all hard and brittle. Got the spark plugs changed, cap wire rotor uh, for the ignition. You know, just cleaned her up, made her look a little nicer. You know what? Here's the deal. This is my baby, right? She may not be what she was back when I bought her. She may not be perfect. But she's mine. She's my girl. She will always be my girl. I'm not going to get rid of her. You might ask, okay, well, what's the plan? Well, for now, the plan is to give her to my kids. I got two boys that are chomping at the bit to get their license and this is going to help them get around and, and uh, take care of what they need to take care of so you know what that's that's that but once they're done with it who knows i thought about you know a lot of different options maybe just doing like a you know eventually the engine's going to give up on me engine's got three almost 300,000 miles we're at 270 i think right now 280 um but eventually the engine's gonna give out. And I thought about, okay, well maybe just doing something easy and doing like an H22 swap, which those are fairly easy on these. Or maybe cutting out the floor and doing an LS3 with a power glide transmission and making it rear wheel drive and, you know, yeah. She's not her former wrecked self, you know, she's much improved from that. But the potential is on the, the you know, she's not going anywhere. Um, in fact, I actually have plans for the back half, which 
you'll see coming up in some future video. But I think she represents different eras of my life, different things that I'm going through. As the changes in her occurred, changes were going on in me as well. So this is my this is my girl. She'll always be my girl. Thanks for watching.